My name is Donovan Warren. I uh, wrote Wheels, co-directed with Tim Gagliardo. I uh, co-produced, co-directed with this guy. I was 20 years old when I started writing Wheels. And basically, I just got evicted from my apartment. It was kind of lonely. And I uh, was doing a scene from Born on the Fourth of July with one of my buddies where we're both paralyzed. And I figured it would you know, it'd make a really good story to have two characters that just have nothing to lose. They have nothing left to fight for. And like, where would that go? You know, where, where would that route take us? So I started writing the script. Um, couldn't sell it, tried to sell it, tried to get it made. Everybody said I didn't have enough experience. So I figured that my logical answer to this was uh, I would write and make an action movie, use the money from the low budget action movie to shoot wheels. So I started, uh, wrote this action movie, which was terrible. And I took it to all these, these uh, producers and basically they said, yeah, well you haven't shot anything that's uh, action. So I was like, okay, let me shoot this action short film. Shot this action short film. Then I um, decided to turn it into a feature, which is probably the worst idea I've ever had. And that's how I met- That's uh, where I came in. Tim. Uh, I think I was brand new to LA here a couple months and nobody would hire me because I had no experience. <laughs> so <laughs> we had that in common. And uh, he interviewed me, he was super professional. I thought this guy owned like, <laughs> owned his own company that was like in the millions and I was so lucky to uh, <laughs> come and work for him. Yeah, little did he know. Little did I know <laughs> until about a month later, I'm like, oh, we're just gonna pile into this van and go somewhere and start shooting, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, so we uh, we were gonna shoot this this action movie. I was like, okay, listen, I got enough money to shoot for seven days, so <laughs> so we were gonna drive to New Mexico to shoot for uh, for seven days, and uh, you know, Tim was like, well, that's like you know, was it? It's like twenty 12, pages a day, <laughs> twelve, fifteen pages a day, and I was like, nah, we could do it. We're just gonna go in the desert. We're gonna shoot it, man. Quick, yeah. Let's make this happen. So we went to the desert. We came back and uh, we shot two and a half pages a day, and. Uh, it came out pretty good, but eventually it was just, mm. I, we were going, it, what happened is this movie came so big and I'm like, why am I shooting this movie that I don't even want to make to get money for the movie that I want to make? Let me just scrap it, start from scratch. And, Lessons uh, learned. And make wheels mm. because I was very passionate about it. So I ended up dumping that project and then uh, me and Tim got together and I think it was uh, my 30th birthday, I eventually, been in Los Angeles for 12 years and I just said you know enough's enough I have to make something so they ended up with Tim I think um, between us we had about $140 in our bank account New Year's Eve um, basically we got together and said let's make this movie let's let nothing stop us and uh, didn't have any money so we started working we just started hiring people um, and yeah, basically you know, we uh we hit our tipping point at the same same time, yeah. where right in my life I was saying, I can't do this anymore, working for all these bad directors and bad producers who make terrible movies, I don't want to do that anymore. And right at the same time, Donovan hit his tipping point, where he said, I have to make this movie. It's been 12 years trying to make this movie, I just need yeah. to make it. So we got together and I said, I love your script. He said he loves his script. And, uh, <laughs> and we just banded together and said, let's do this, nothing will stop us. Yeah, so, um, so, we started, so we started shooting, I think, in March, and the whole thing was, we didn't, number one, we never had money for this movie at any point. I mean, we had a little bit of money, but it was just, you know, the, the scale of movies and what we were trying to do, we didn't have that much. So, basically we said, okay, I got a tax return, you know, it's like, what do you got? It's like, I got a car, I got a TV, I got tax returns coming in, and we would write everything down, and it would be like, mm -hmm. okay, if you sell your Xbox, you get 200 bucks, and we're like, okay, we need to get to this number, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, we were always short of that number, we were always short of that number, yeah, <laughs> always. we were always short of that number, so we started selling stuff, so I was like, well, we don't have enough to shoot the whole movie, let's shoot the first part, where Mickey hasn't done heroin, and then we'll tell everybody else that, that the reason we're gonna wait to shoot the next block is so I can lose all this weight. That way it sounds that like a possible thing, really, just because we didn't have enough money to shoot the whole thing. And that gives us X amount of months to raise the money and figure it out. 
we shot in three blocks, right? Block one was our sort of first block where we didn't have enough money to shoot the whole movie, but it was where Mickey lost before he lost all the weight. So it was like basically act one. It says act one in the script. Basically, yeah. And it was kind of a disaster, you know. Um, I think it was our worst f functioning block. You know, we did we did a lot of prep. We did storyboards. We did all this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the prep just wasn't enough to <laughs> overcome the endless disasters. And, and they're not, a lot of them aren't things you can prepare for. Like our, our lead actress got pregnant and decided to move back to France so she could get the free health care. Uh, basically yeah. in the middle of the shoot. I mean. She told us, she told us right before we started shooting. And we're like, oh, it's fine. You know, we'll, we'll. Uh, yeah, you're you know, not we'll, showing. Yeah, we're not showing, blah, blah, blah. Fine. But then, you know. The, the period in, in between block two just took forever, but um, we had tons of location problems. I think it was our second our second day of shooting. So our first day we shot and it was going crazy. The second day of shooting, we were growing and we basically took over this apartment building. And uh, we had this big giant pink RV. This producer had this oh, big right. giant pink RV. That and said we, uh, lipstick bail bonds so with neon pink, lipstick bail yeah. bonds, big giant six foot red female lips across it and everyone thought we're doing porn or something. <laughs> so we thought it'd be great because we have a we have a place to manage the locations, we have a place for people to change, all this stuff. And it ended up just being this like bad luck nightmare, like mad homing beacon of disaster. So the, the the second the second day of shooting, the owner of this apartment building that we took over comes in and he goes, Hey, I'm 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 kicking you guys out of here and uh you know, if you come back, I'm gonna call the cops, you wanna charge us all this money and all that stuff. So after that day I you know, there was uh there was so a few of our crew members quit just because it was so difficult. And then that was the beginning of the shoot you know we ended up shooting like day two yeah, it was like day two we got kicked out of our first location i thought the movie was over just so much pressure but um you know we finally finished block one <laughs> then began the weight loss which i was you know i said i was going to do so i so i ended up doing it um dropped 50 50 pounds. I get down to like 143. My natural mm -hmm. weight is about 193, 95, roughly around there. And uh, it was a nightmare. The whole thing, the, the thing that was really stressful for me with, with the weight loss was uh, I was losing all this weight. I wasn't eating, and the, the process took me five minutes, uh, five months. You know, I was sleeping two hours a night because I wasn't eating. Like, it was just psychologically, it was just an absolute nightmare. Like, there's no way around it. You just, you, you're constantly thinking about food. And, uh... Donut fantasies. Donut fantasies. Made it into the film. He's like, we have to shoot a donut shop. So I started we writing. must shoot a donut shop. I'm going to add a scene with, with a donut shop. Obsessed with Krispy Kreme. And, uh... <laughs> what was I going to say? Basically, this whole time I'm on this diet, and I've lost, you know, 50 pounds or whatever. I'm starving. You know, just my whole life is revolving around this. We didn't have the money to shoot the second block. I signed up for this medical testing thing that I tried to get into before. The third time I finally got in. But the second time I went in there, they would hook you up to these, like, heart monitors. I had all these, like, heart things up my body or whatever. And I went to sleep and I woke up and there, there was all these alarms going off on these nurses ran in and basically my heart rate had dropped below 35 beats a minute because I'd lost so much weight. I was doing two hours of cardio a day and all this stuff. And they thought I was going to die. So they kicked me out of the medical testing at that point. So the first time I went in, I was like 195. I came back like, you know, five months later, I'm, I'm uh, 145, 145 pounds. They're like, you know, you look a little bitter. I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh, there's you know, drugs. And then finally we got the money again. I think uh, at this point you would moved out of your apartment yeah we made uh we basically fire sailed uh you sold your car i moved out of my apartment after i sold everything i owned and uh i took the deposit from moving out and and all the money from selling everything i owned and then we signed up for every credit card that you could possibly sign up for and then uh yeah my credit was yeah i don't think i'll ever recover no i mean yeah uh, that was no you're 
But uh, yeah, Not between a, reliable people don't make movies, I guess. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't trust filmmakers with yeah, credit cards. Don't That's trust a film. lesson. Um, so credit cards plus basically selling everything we had. Uh, I kept my car, so there's one car between us, and he kept his apartment, so there was one apartment between us, and uh, <laughs> it's. it's Definitely a team effort to make it happen. But, uh, I think, you know, I think at this point, too, my roommate gave me her car, and it's actually the car that's in the film, which we I bought for her for $350. Mm -hmm. She ended up getting a newer car. So I had this car where you would roll down the, the passenger side window and the door would open. Right, which I found out while exiting yeah, the highway. The freeway, right? I was like, let me just <laughs> flying out the door. And so, anyways, um, all this stuff, we finally we got we got a couple investors with actually a little bit of a little, a bit, little of bit of money, just, but not yeah, not enough, just enough to where we could actually get finished with that shoot. So then we began our biggest block, which was our six week shoot for a low budget film. Is a lot. Yeah, um, that's three features for some low budget films. <laughs> yeah, and the whole time I'm. Um, constantly thinking about food for six weeks while shooting this thing we went in the ocean almost got hypothermia almost drowned it was yeah. just it was just ocean was 62 degrees it 62 was... degrees which is not that cold like now you can go into it but for whatever reason because my body weight was so low there was no fat and also i wasn't taking enough energy to like heat up my body it was just a huge mm -hmm. and this is a whole nightmare. day of going in the ocean getting out warming up just a little bit and then you know, being that like, was we got to do least, another like, take. Least favorite days of my life. Yeah. Like, I think not I, even just. I think I was shooting. seasick on the boat. Like it was a. Uh, yeah. yeah. I didn't but even was, get in the water and it was miserable. But it was good. Then we did the water tank. The water tank was a little bit warmer, so that was good. Mm -hmm. We got. We ended up. Uh, one of our friends hooked us up with a great location. Uh, shot some water tank stuff and uh, repaid them by doing work. Me and the other camera guy cleaned up work. We all we worked basically for two days, like helping them clean up stuff. One of the studios that we shot at, we did landscaping for two days to That's right. pay back, pay back them for the space. Okay. We traded labor for locations. The scene where we had a luxury car, and we oh, we, right. we spent yeah. eight weeks scouring everywhere we could to find someone let us use their luxury car to get into a car accident and basically kind of mess it up a little bit. And I think it was the night before shooting when we finally gave up. We're like, that's it. Nobody's going to give it to us. Yeah, nobody really wants you to... I, I basically told people we would smash the windshield and then buy them a new windshield. And nobody really went for it. So we did what any filmmaker would do was... Make it happen. Rented a car. And <laughs> I remember that there was, um, was this old uh, Jim Belushi movie where he goes in and rent a, rents a car and he goes, I want the best insurance that you have. <laughs> and then he's a cop and it's like these guys are robbing a bank. And then he drives into the bank with a rental car to like break up the robbery but i had that scene playing in my head so anyways i was like i want the best insurance that you have we go and we're you know we're grilling on this downtown street where we didn't have permits we blocked <laughs> off the street we just we had, had some orange vests on a pa and put, put it at the PA end of the street in a, in an orange <laughs> vest and basically said hey look look professional and all that stuff <laughs> and we had this 50 foot crane and this oh, is yeah. one of the deleted scenes it's in the in the movie we got this, and at the end of the day, the car is just like, you know, it looks like somebody hit somebody. And so, I'm like, all right, well, I got to take it back. So, like, yeah, we had to take the seats apart. We had to take off the rearview mirror. The windshield wipers came off. Uh, the hood got dented. We smashed up the glass. The bumper was chewed up because it was running into the wheelchair. I mean, it was, it was damaged. <laughs> so then it's the end of the day, and I got this thing, and I called the, uh, I called the rental place, and I say, hey, you know a rock uh, came off the freeway and hit the windshield you know can you guys come pick it up and uh <laughs> it's not drivable <laughs> it's not drivable and they go they go was well, the engine work i go yeah the engine works they go then you got to drive it over here i go what do you mean i gotta drive it over you can't drive it it's dangerous they go you got to drive it over there so we call uh triple a triple a which had a seven mile limit <laughs> yeah the triple a driver gets out of the gets out of the thing and he goes I don't even want to know because it looks like we hit a person you know there's the body print in the, the windshield he drives us seven miles and then we got four more miles to go mm -hmm. so i get back and i'm driving the car with the, the, the glass is all shattered and like a cartoon it's like splintering while i'm driving mm. so i'm like this because i'm worried it's going to come in and like you know get glass, glass all over the place so i'm driving like this through a cracked windshield 
while this thing's splintering, oh, I, so I pull off. So, <laughs> so I pull off the freeway, and there's a there's a police officer on the other side of the, the stoplight, and I'm thinking for sure he's gonna pull me over. Right, it's gonna be it. He's gonna be like, "Why are you driving this car? Who did you hit? All this stuff." Don't he doesn't see it somehow? I don't know. The, the Lord was looking after us or something. I don't know. Pull into the the rental place, right? And the first thing that this guy says, and it was after um, Tiger Woods' wife or whatever hit his car with the thing. He goes, this guy pulls up. He goes, he goes, damn. He goes, she caught you, man. Caught you cheating, <laughs> right? The car is completely jacked up. So I pull in. And they're like, what happened? And I was like, oh, you know, a tire, because the the uh, AAA guy, the AAA guy gave us a tip. He goes, just say a tire came off a wheel. It happens all the time. So I said a tire came off a wheel and hit the windshield. So the, the girl's like, oh my god. She goes, I gotta get my manager. She runs, gets her manager. The manager comes out. She's looking at the car and she's like, I can see right where the tire hit, right there. <laughs> and that was it. That was another day Heroin. on wheels. Yeah, so we had the 12-hour shoot day, the couple hours before it to get the car, and then the couple hours after it to deal with this car. Yeah. So we have the, you know, one of those 18-hour days, and it's like, oh, by the way, don't forget your nap before we start this all over again tomorrow. And that's that's what it was like in Block 2, it was you were going to work, take a nap and work, and it... it I think the, the longest day we had on Block 2 was like our 36-hour day. Yeah, it was in the 30s, and uh, I or, think we had a 15-minute nap in the middle somewhere. Yeah, it was literally like I went home, and I was like, I have to sleep for some sort of time, and I set yeah. my alarm for 12 minutes. Something and crazy, that and that was it. Just close your eyes, take 12 minutes. Fortunately, on camera, you're supposed to look like a crackhead. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's okay so. if I fall asleep. <laughs> I, I, I remember I couldn't tell the difference on certain days, and I'm like, are you wearing makeup or not? <laughs> like, I couldn't... <laughs> I remember this is the first day I remember we started shooting Block 2, because I had the gash... The cracked out look and all this stuff, and I was like, "Tim, why is nobody listening to me on set? Why is nobody <laughs> taking me seriously?" <laughs> it's like, it just looked like I was just out of my mind. Yeah, plus the the diet and the psychological craziness yeah. you were going through. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, there was a there was a couple times where I snapped at people and had to be like, you know, I'm so sorry because yeah. I'm not like that. But mm. so we did that, and then um, successfully shot for all eight weeks. Shot that out. And then I think we gave like three weeks. We're like, well, you gotta, you know, you're gonna have to eat a lot. You're gonna need like three <laughs> weeks off, you know, to gain all that weight back. I think gained Literally, it like three I gained days. it in like two days. Yeah, I think I gained like 35 pounds in like a day. I, I didn't think it was possible. I remember you smashing all your little Tupperware creations that you had so you could yeah. monitor your meals. And then you went out and ate a box of donuts and a, a pizza or two. Remember, it was the beginning of block three. That's right. And Esther comes running up to me, and, and, and she's like, something's wrong. Like, something's, you know, why is everything going so smoothly? Like, what's <laughs> going on here? And then Daniel was like, what's, I know that something's wrong. And we're like, no, everything's actually fine. This is the way it's supposed to go. It's actually going smooth. Uh, and then we got a phone call, and somebody's like, the truck is on fire. So the truck couldn't even make it to set, and yeah, the wheel was... fell off. And instead of panicking and being like, oh, no, we don't have equipment to shoot, we're like, Oh, oh, that's yeah, better. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God something, something finally went happen. wrong. Like, now we know we're making wheels. So we did that. We finally finished block three. And then uh, our last hit was the heaven, heaven scene. scene, which is, again, one of the deleted scenes or alternate uh, endings uh, that will be in there. And uh, heaven is a parking garage in Burbank, in case you guys. <laughs> if you're wondering where heaven is. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> where it is. <laughs>